Hey, I want to show you a cool way to draw sectional perspectives that can really communicate a lot about a building. So instead of doing a bunch of one or two point perspectives, you can knock out with a sectional perspective that kills multiple birds with one stone. By the way, if you are interested in seeing more of my design process on Lightpath, I have a free three part workshop that you can sign up for today. The workshop are perfect if you are considering moving to a digital workflow that will save you time, allow you to work smarter and faster and free you from a traditional office environment. I'll show you real world examples with different applications on how I use my iPad for architectural and interior design work. You can click this link above or find it in the video description below. Before I start tracing, I usually do some work with the red lines on a separate layer behind the layer that I'm currently drawing on. These are things that were either remodeled incorrectly in SketchUp or information that were missing. I typically refer to the CAT drawing and the PDF to understand the project first instead of relying on the 3D model provided by the client. And once I start tracing over the geometries, I trace over the correct version of the design. Imagine having to correct all the mistakes that weren't reflected in the model that would take significantly more time and probably isn't the best used in terms of the project. And the 3D model is really just there to assess me with basic construction lines so I don't have to build this perspective from scratch. As with any project, the first step is to trace over the basic geometry without adding too many details or textures. And this allows me to focus on the overall composition and proportion of the drawing, ensuring that everything is in the right place and at the right scale. Once I'm satisfied with the basic structure of the drawing, I can move on to more creative aspects. At this point, I started to add in details like people, materials, and colors. And this is where the drawing really starts to come to life as I can begin to visualize the scene in my mind's eye. I might experiment with different colors or materials to see what worked best for the overall mood and feel of the space. While this part of the drawing can be more time consuming and requires more attention to detail, it's also the most rewarding. And seeing the image slowly take shape as I add in more details and elements is incredibly satisfying and I'm always excited to see the finished products once everything is completed. Overall, while the initial tracing of the basic structure might be the most mundane part of the drawing process, it's also essential to creating a successful piece. And by taking the time to get the composition and proportion just right, I can ensure that the rest of the drawing can come together more smoothly and effectively. After tracing over the basic geometry, it is important to add entourage like people, animals, and other objects to give the drawing context and tell its story. And this will enhance the drawing given the kind of activities and engagement you want to communicate. Then finding the right entourage is crucial since it plays a significant role in conveying the desired message. Moreover, it's important to consider the placement of the entourage as it can affect the overall feel of the artwork. Once the entourage is in place, it's time to add in more details and texture to the drawing. This phase is an opportunity to further enhance the artwork by adding intricate details that will help identify the space. However, it's important not to overdo it with the details. Instead, think about where the details will contribute most to the overall feel of the story and what can be omitted. It's also good to create a new layer when you're adding details and texture to the drawing. So this way, any information added during this phase can be removed if necessary without affecting previous layers. And by doing it this way, it ensures that your drawing is easily editable and you can make changes when needed. When working on a drawing, it's important to have a good process to make sure that everything looks good in the end. And one technique that I use is to first complete the line work and then add in the color. This helps keep everything organized and make it really easy to manage different parts and elements of the drawing. And to start, I group similar colors on their own individual layers. So for example, a section cut with flooring, glazing, and concrete would all be on their own layer. So this way it's easy to make changes and adjusting the colors without affecting the other elements in the drawing. If you're not sure which color to use, 
don't worry. Working light pad is great because you can separate the coloring onto different layers and easily make adjustments to contrast, hues, exposure, or anything else. And this allows you to experiment with different color combinations to find the perfect look that you're looking for in the drawing. Finally, I bring in the SketchUp shadow layer and overlay it on top of the hand render for another layer of depth. And this helps bring out the three dimensional aspect of the place even more, making it more realistic and uh, visually appealing. So before wrapping up the drawing, I can add finishing touches such as highlights, shadow and textures and more details to the drawing. And this is where the rendering really starts to come to life. And also take this time to correct any mistakes such as lines that are too thick or too thin or areas that need to be darkened or lightened. So this attention to detail is crucial in producing a high quality drawing. So once the initial drawing is completed, there are usually multiple rounds of revision and editing before the final drawing is exported. This allows for feedback from clients and peers and a chance to make any necessary changes to ensure that the drawing meets the desired specification and standards. I hope that this information I provided has been useful to you. And if there are other topics that you'd like me to cover in the future, please don't hesitate to reach out or leave a comment in the section below. Uh, additionally, if you enjoy the drawing included in this document, I will be happy to create more of them in the future.